So uh, Leslie and I have uh, put together this little slideshow. The way it works is that I will uh, give the, the formal presentation, and then Leslie chimes in and tells me uh, and all of you what parts I got wrong. Um, the first question that gets asked about the, the curriculum template is, where did, we, where did this come from? Did we dream it up? Uh, did it, was it just a, group of sm uh, a small group of people that uh, got together uh, and made a bunch of decisions? And the answer is no. There was input from a, a wide variety of stakeholders, as, as you can see from this slide. Um, the faculty, the students, our alumni, uh, et cetera, all had chances for input, and we're going to still require and need your input uh, going forward. We also, uh, importantly, did not just stay within uh, the school and within Oregon. We looked at curricula throughout the United States, uh, um, selected some areas that we thought there might be uh, best practices, and actually um, sent teams uh, to uh, various institutions to get a better sense of what they were doing. And so we believe that this new uh, curriculum that we're developing really is a blend of great ideas from across the country um, while preserving um, important strengths uh, and commitments of our faculty uh, and what makes Oregon so unique. So the point here is it was not done in a vacuum. It was done with lots of, of, of uh, uh, room and space for input, and that process uh, will continue. Um, in terms of principles for the new curriculum, there are um, some important uh, aspects that are shown on this slide. The first is that we're trying to move from a teacher-centered process to a learner-centered process. That's a very difficult concept to really get your head around and, and, and put into practice. But some examples of that include the idea that time may not be the best metric or the best, um, let's say, uh, place to constrain a curriculum. For example, the student can accelerate quickly. Why would we not allow that student to move, progress rapidly through the curriculum, or perhaps allow flexibility and deeply dive into areas where they haven't, that they would be interested in doing, and that otherwise the curriculum would constrain. But um, in addition, though, if it goes the other way, if, some, if a student is struggling, that the curriculum ought to be able to expand uh, to help that student as well. That's just one example. But the point here, or maybe the, the, uh, the place to start, actually, is that um, our learners are different. When um, our medical students enroll uh, in the OHSU School of Medicine MD program, they don't start at the same place. We have uh, uh, learners that have a wealth of experience across a wide variety um, of, of different uh, programs um, and uh, work experience, etc. So, for example, if one of our students has been an EMT for 10 years, uh, or one has been a nurse for six years, uh, or one just came out of college, or one uh, had a PhD and was working in industry, how could, why and how, sh um, or why should we uh, actually treat them the same? We should allow individualization, um, and that's important. So it allows, the new curriculum allows this idea of differentiation amongst the learners. The third bullet perhaps is the most important. The <coughs> idea of a competency-based uh, curriculum is such that learners progress when they've mastered competencies. For those of you that deal with uh, graduate medical education. GME is moving in this direction. Um, and uh, for those of you in the, in the basic sciences and PhD, I think you'll understand this, that um, you, don't allow, you don't grant a PhD just because someone's been there for four years, right? It's, it's after the, the, they've achieved what the faculty believes, their tenure committee, uh, not their tenure, sorry, their, uh, their uh, thesis committee um, believes um, they, that, that they've actually achieved uh, what it takes to earn that, that PhD. And so that concept of mastering competencies and then allowing to progress is very important. We think it's very, uh, also very important to fully integrate the clinical sciences and the basic sciences. Right now, it's a catch-as-catch-can kind of process. Arguably, it's a binge and purge kind of process. Learn this material, take an exam, get rid of it, move on. Uh, we think that's bad learning. So how can we make the curriculum, quote, more sticky? Um, how can we, we have scientific questions um, uh, within the context, the framework of, a, of clinical problems? How can we have uh, people in clinical fields, clinical dealing with, with patients, think about the foundations of medicine uh, and the science that underpins that? Um, that was a critical piece, uh, and hopefully the template uh, reflects that, uh, as you'll see in just a few minutes. Um, we understand that there's a core there's material, I think the way that Leslie says it is there, there's stuff that everybody needs to know no matter what, 
There's stuff that's important to know, um, and we should strive for that. And then there's stuff that's really icing on the cake. Um, the core is critical. We absolutely are committed to that. The other stuff, lots of room for individualization. In terms of pedagogy or the, the, the approaches to teaching, method, the methodologies of education, we believe that active learning is going to be better um, in terms of the learning process um, than more passive learning processes. So how do we engage the learners um, in these uh, through case discussions, through their own deep thinking and their own sort of getting their hands wet? That's important. And then finally, uh, ultimately, we want to produce clinicians that are competent and that are critical thinkers uh, that uh, value inquiry uh, and that truly are dedicated to lifelong learning. Uh, the way I, I say this in practice is uh, many of the drugs that I use in my infectious disease practice uh, literally were not approved uh, and many did not exist uh, when I went to medical school and was a resident fellow. So um, uh, medicine marches forward like, like uh, all, all fields do and uh, this lifelong learning piece is absolutely critical. So with that as background, uh, let me try to walk you through this template. The concept here is that each of these rows uh, represents a year uh, in the life of a student, but I meant what I said earlier that individualization could allow some flexibility in both acceleration and deceleration depending on the skills and talents of the individual student. I'm going to start up in the upper left in this, if I can get the pointer here, you can't, maybe not, oops, I'm trying to get that, there it is in the salmon-colored box or rectangle in the upper left. The idea is that before matriculation occurs, we're going to have every single student go through an assessment process. We're going to find out where they are, their life experiences, um, their, uh, their skill set, their, deep, their, their foundational knowledge. Where are they? Um, and in some cases, probably not often, but in some cases, we'll be able to say, you know what? You can skip ahead. Right? In other places, wow, you really aren't ready to go, right? And so uh, we have to level the playing field, if you will, uh, to make sure that people really are ready uh, to enter um, the MD program. Um, the gray box, just to the, to the uh, uh, right of that salmon colored box in the upper left, that's a foundation core. Um, and the idea here is that there are, there's information, there's information that needs to um, uh, be transferred, obtained, and really integrated uh, before we can move into an organ system model, which I'll talk about in a second. What could that core consist of? Well, here are some of the things that we're thinking about that I'm circling with the, or with the, the mouse. Things like genetics, uh, pharmacology, um, some biochemistry, uh, epi, things along those lines. When I mean pharmacology, I don't mean pharmacotherapeutics. I don't mean the drugs. I mean things like volume of distribution, um, first-pass metabolism, concepts of pharmacology that will help downstream as we talk about the drugs in the different organ systems. The pink represents the foundational sciences, classically known as the basic sciences, um, and the idea there is that there's going to be uh, organ system blocks that's represented by the blue uh, rectangles across the first year and a half. Um, so let me you pick the third one uh, to give you an example uh, and make it more concrete. The third one, if I can find the arrow, there it is, it says lung, heart, kidney. So the idea is that within that block, um, the students will learn about uh, the histology, the cells, the physiology, the pharmacology, the physical diagnosis, the diseases of the heart, lung, and kidney, the, the drugs that are used for those diseases, the epidemiology, the social determinants of health, all of the things that are, affect the, those organs, and we do it in a way that integrates better clinical problems and foundational sciences. After each of those organ system blocks, uh, and actually both preceding and following, both pre and post, there are assessments. Again, where are you beforehand and where are you afterwards? They look like they're fixed in terms of time. In the future, not right away, but in the future, as we build the learning objects that fill these blocks, some will be case studies, some will be experiential learning, um, um, ex um, uh, exper uh, learning experiences that are more hands-on, I'll put it that way. They might be research experiences. Um, they might be lectures, they might be uh, digital uh, conversations, whatever it happens to be. The idea is that if we can build them in a modular fashion, they'll actually look more like accordions. So potentially, you can, they can shrink or expand again, depending on the individualization of the student. Not right away, those will have to be built in time. But in the end, um, what's going to happen is that we'll have our students 
ready to take USMLE Part 1 in the middle of the second year. That's that bright yellow box in the second row. Before I go on, I forgot to mention an important thing. In the upper left, you'll see a row of fundamental threads, and that's just some examples of those fundamental threads. There are, there are important content areas like ethics and informatics, public health, um, and many others that we believe need to be threaded through the curriculum, not just given sort of a, oh, for two weeks, it's all you're going to study. These are important concepts across um, so many areas that they really should be woven in uh, and across different areas. Um, after the first yellow box, the, the high stakes exam of part one, USMLE examination, the, the students will then enter their core clerkships. Uh, there's a lot of definition that has to be fleshed out here, uh, so don't ask me how long they are or which exact ones they are. We're not there yet. Um, we're getting close, but we're not there yet. Um, but the concept is that there's a clinical experience followed by an inner session. That's this sort of bluish-gray rectangle, these things. It says one week, although I think that's um, uh, up for debate at this point. But the point is some time to integrate um, what, the, what they've learned and, again, return to the foundational sciences. So if, for example, a student saw somebody with preeclampsia during uh, an obstetrics rotation, well, what's the, what's the pathophysiology of that? Um, and what's the epidemiology of that? And what do, what do we learn, know about maternal fetal health um, around those issues? Uh, and you know, why are we getting to disparity issues? Why uh, is there such a higher birth, uh, sorry, higher death rates in infants um, in African Americans, for example, than there is in Caucasians? So you can start to get into lots of areas by pausing bet um, between clinical experiences and returning and going deeper into certain subjects. Uh, Importantly, uh, the green stops, uh, if you will, in the middle of the third year. That allows a very important piece, which is that our students can now experience, in the second half of the third year, some areas of medicine that really have been sequestered from them. Uh, for example, uh, urology uh, or radiology, There's uh, radiation medicine. There's areas that students might be interested in but there's been no place for them to experience it before they have to make residency decisions. So we, allow, we, will, we believe that this will allow exposure to some very important areas that our students really haven't had a chance to, to touch, if you will, um, uh, in, a more, in a direct way um, in the current curriculum. And then finally, in the fourth year, um, there's a very important component that's uh, depicted by this greenish rectangle followed by this blue rectangle. This idea of a scholarly project um, that has to be have rigor behind it, uh, and the rigor will be in the capstone. Um, and this scholarly project might be a research project, but it could also be a service learning experience. Um, it might be, um, for example, advanced uh, clerkships uh, in, in a particular area. It might be a return to foundational sciences. But the idea is to get your get the encourage and allow students to really go deep into a specific area that they might be interested. This could range everything from spending a, several months down in Salem on health policy. Um, it might be um, a, um, doing a, 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 an in-depth experience, for example, in Central America, looking at the nutritional effects on, um, uh, let's say, birth, everything from uh, height to uh, height and weight to um, uh, the parasitology uh, of sand flies or that, are, that sand flies are vectors for. So the point of all this is, um, uh, can be summarized in the next slide, but I want to say one last thing that's in the upper right. That we believe that this will also allow better opportunity for our of different kinds of students mixing together, not just what we're doing with the interprofessional initiative on campus, but also that our graduate students in the School of Medicine can interact with our MD students um, in, a way, in a way that's meaningful. That might for, mean, for example, learning together. It might mean tutoring of each other. It might mean the ability to frame clinical ideas for the scientists and scientific ideas for the clinicians and things like that. We think that will be a very enriching experience. One thing about leadership also before I go on is that we anticipate leadership for all these different blocks and modules to be paired by scientists and clinicians. We think that a scientist um, helping frame the core clerkships and the, especially the intersessions will help the core clerkships be better and, and also in the, in the basic science foundational years 
that there should be clinic clinicians involved also in the what, which pieces should be taught and, which, and what might be omitted. Uh, so here are the highlights, and then we'll see if there's questions. And, uh, and Leslie, of course, will chime in for what I've missed. Um, here's what we think are the, the critical pieces. Uh, prematriculation prematriculation self-assessment that will allow strengths to come out and individualization to begin to occur and when needed remediation to occur. There will be an introductory foundations block to level the playing field. We're going to teach the foundational sciences in organ blocks that are integrated. Um, in the end, we'll start the clerkships earlier, but we'll finish the core clerkships early as well. That will allow exposure to areas that otherwise have been, if you will, hidden. There will be intercessions between the clerkships to, to um, provide integration, opportunity for integration and stickiness. Um, we're going to uh, require a scholarly project that will have rigor behind it uh, through the capstone. Um, and uh, the idea here is providing students with the foundations they need, but the opportunity to individualize, and we believe we will create a better product, if you will, to serve society downstream. That, mean, that means pre preparation for residency, but also uh, lifelong learners downstream. So with that, uh, my last point is you can get lots more information at this uh, um, URL. Uh, so click on that, you'll see the work group reports, you'll see these templates, you'll see um, uh, the faculty survey results I think will soon be up. Uh, um, and so lots more information, so go here for more, for, um, if you want to read more about it. And we are looking for your feedback and input. Dr. Kale, did I miss anything? emphasize that what you saw in those boxes is 